Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and Happy New Year to you guys. Hope you all enjoyed uh, the first uh, day of 2021. So hope uh, it went well. Hope we have a decent year uh, in store uh, for everyone around the world. From, you know, last year being one of the worst years in history. But, you know, let's make 2021 a decent year. Hopefully, you know, this COVID shit uh, gets toned down a little bit as the year progresses. Maybe, you know, in the summertime. But we'll see. Let's, let us all hope for a decent 2021. So, but welcome to the SmackDown Review. And this is the first SmackDown of 2021. And the show sucked. The show sucked tonight. Nothing interesting happened on this show aside from the opening and the end into the show. With uh, Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens and Jey Uso. So, let's jump right in to the review. So SmackDown opened up the first uh, show of 2021 for SmackDown opened up with Roman Reigns coming out. Roman Reigns came out along with Paul Heyman and Jey Uso. Reigns end up coming into the ring. He got on the mic and he ended up wishing everyone a happy new year. Reigns went on to say that 2020 has been had been rough. But when you're the head of the table, you make it work as the tribal chief. Reigns went on to say that everything he touches turns to greatness. He ended up mentioning uh, saving Paul Heyman after he was tossed out. He ended up going on praising Paul Heyman as the uh, most genuine, honest man he's ever done business with. Reigns ended up saying that his cousin, Jay Uso, is a prime example of what he can do. He ended up saying, just listen to him. And he said, what happened? It's been the best year of Jay's career. Reigns went on, went on praising his cousin and the success that he's had, all because he acknowledged him as his tribal chief. Reigns then turned to his cousin Jay, and he ended up saying that he did this because he knows who Jay is, and that he's understood since day one. And Reigns ended up saying that he would never have put all this on Jay, but he knew he would knock it out of the park each time. And that's why he ended up saying that he loves Jay. So then out came Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens ended up interrupting uh, Roman Reigns. Reigns ended up yelling for Owens' music to be cut. Yep, yeah, saying that no one wants to hear Owens' music. So Roman was yelling at Kevin Owens about how no one wants to see him. And that Owens is irrelevant. And that it's embarrassing to see him. He yeah, up saying that Owens was a social media sweetheart for a few weeks. And that now it's done. Reigns then ended up saying that he gave Kevin Owens' family a good payday. So he hopes Owens gave his family a good Christmas. Reigns went on to say that tonight is all about him and his family. So Owens ended up saying that it is embarrassing to Roman to see him out here. Because this all means Roman and his family have failed. And 
Owens went on to say about what it took for him, for Reigns and Jey Uso to guarantee Roman to keep the Universal Championship. Owens ended up saying that the big dog is gone and he's been replaced by a giant bitch. So Owens ended up saying that Reigns is right. It's not about a fight between them. And it is about his cousin Jay. And that's fine, he ended up saying. So Owens ended up saying that he's here to fight. He's not here to fight Reigns, but to fight Jay Uso. Owens ended up saying that Jay will pay for what his cousin has done. He ended up saying that he's going to the back and he doesn't care who he has to talk to. He's telling them, but not asking. And that he will fight Jay later on tonight. Yes, he, Kevin Owens went uh, to go to the back uh, and tell Adam Pierce to make the match official. So Kevin Owens uh, wanted Jay Uso because of what Jay Uso did to uh, Owens last week in the steel cage match where he ended up handcuffing uh, Kevin Owens just so Reigns could walk out of the cage and retain the Universal Championship. So Owens ended up saying that when he's done with Jay, Roman's family will have nothing to celebrate. So that was basically how uh, the segment ended, but this was a really uh, decent uh, segment to open the show with. Like I said, this was this was the only uh, good uh, portion of SmackDown tonight, and of course the ending, which I will get to, because it involved all three, you know, Kevin Owens, Roman, and Jey Uso. So, but really enjoyed this. So then we had Big E versus Corbin, which this was boring. Corbin uh, was out there along with uh, Wesley Blake and Steve Cutler. Sami Zayn was on commentary uh, along with uh, Michael Cole and Corey Graves. So the match ended in a disqualification because Sami Zayn ended up rushing into the ring. We had Big E hit the big ending to uh, Corbin. And that was when Sami Zayn ended up running into the ring. Uh, broke broke it up, broke up the pin, and that caused the uh, the, squal the disqualification. Post match, we had uh, Wesley Blake and Steve Cutler. They end up in the ring. They end up attacking Big E while he was down. Big E then fighted Blake and Cutler off. Sammy then end up attacking uh, Big E from behind. So it was a three on one attack on Big E. Apollo Crews then ended up coming out. Apollo Crews made the save for Big E. He ended up sending uh, Wesley Blake and Steve Cutler uh, out of the ring, out to the floor. Apollo Crews then ended up dodging a huluva kick from Sami Zayn. He ended up uh, lifting Sami high in the air, pressing Sami Zayn. He tossed Sami Zayn out of the ring onto... Uh, Blake and Cutler, and we just saw Apollo Crews and Big E uh, in the ring in SmackDown with the commercial. Then when SmackDown came back from the commercial, we had Big E and Apollo Crews versus Sami Zayn and Corbin, and they end up saying that Adam Pearce made this uh, tag team match official, which the match was just meh in my opinion. It wasn't that good. Big in Apollo Crews uh, won the match uh, where we had uh, Big E uh, running back to the ring to make the uh, the pin. Apollo Crews ended up catching Sami Zayn with a Inseguri, with a step up Inseguri, and then hit the uh, sit down power bomb to Sami Zayn. Big E ran back in and went for the pin. So there you go. Big E and Apollo Crews ended up win the match. Well, overall, very meh match, in my opinion. 
So then we saw Adam Pierce backstage. Adam Pierce was shown on the phone. Kevin Owens then walked up to Pierce. Owen ended up telling uh, Adam Pierce that he's here to fight Jay. And that he's going to do it either way. He ended up telling Pierce that it would be great if he made the match. If Pierce ended up making the match. And Pierce ended up telling Kevin Owens about everything that he has going on for the night. So Owens ended up begging Adam Pierce. He says that he can do it. You know, he could beat Jay Uso. So Anna Pierce was like, Oh, I'll give you anyone else on the roster. Owens ended up saying that he'll take Roman. Pierce then asks Kevin Owens why he's doing this. So both of them uh, went back and forth. Pierce ended up uh, giving Kevin Owens the match with Jay Uso. So there you go. We saw that uh, later on in the night, which was the main event. And then we saw Apollo Crews and Big E uh, walking backstage. They were talking about how they just uh, won the match against Sami Zayn and Corbin. And Kayla Braxton walked up to them. They ended up congratul- she ended up congratulating uh, both Apollo and Big E. She ended up asking Big E what to expect from him as Intercontinental Champion in 2021. Biggie ended up telling Caleb Braxton that he will be a fighting champion and that he will be issuing an open challenge for the Intercontinental Championship next week. Apollo Crews ended up saying that uh, consider that challenge already accepted. So he ended up saying that it will be an honor to fight Biggie next week. So Apollo ended up saying that he might not be so lucky. Big E might not be so lucky when Apollo Crews won't have his back. So Big E and Apollo Crews end up laughing together. There was uh, some tension uh, there also. So there you go. Apollo Crews versus Big E next week on SmackDown for the Intercontinental Championship. All we could say is that Big E is retaining the title. So then we went to Sasha, Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair versus Bailey and Carmella. This was a okay women's match here. We had Sasha, of course, come out first. She's a SmackDown Women's Champion. And then Bianca ended up coming out. Then uh, Carmella came out along with Osamalie, Reginald. And then Bailey came out last. But we had the match start off with Bianca and Carmella. Carmella ducked the clothesline from Bianca. And Bianca ended up dropping Carmella. Bianca ended up lifting Carmella by her arm. Carmella then ended up fighting out. And Bailey ended up running in, got drop kicked by uh, Bianca. There was a point in the match where we had Reginald get involved, where uh, Sasha ended up applying the bank statement on Carmella. Reginald ended up grabbing uh, Carmella's leg, pulled her out. So Reginald was uh, in the ring. He he had a stare down with Sasha. He ended up uh, backing up and launched himself through the ropes. He was doing uh, flips. Like he was in Circus Soleil. So Reginald got back on the ring apron. Did a backflip off the ring apron. Like I said, him doing Circus Soleil backflips. Because Sasha was uh, reaching for him. Carmella then ended up coming from behind with a kick. But Sasha ended up catching it. Ended up dropping Carmella for a two count. Reginald got back uh, to the ring apron and Sasha ended up punching 
uh, Reginald off the uh, apron. And then Carmella then drops Sasha with a Mella Buster. So there you go. Carmella and Bailey ended up winning the match. But overall, it was an okay uh, women's match here. So then we went backstage and we saw Jey Uso, Roman, and Paul Heyman. Reigns uh, isn't happy that the match was made because of all you know he's done for the company. Because he saw the uh, Jey Uso, Kevin Owens graphic on the TV. And he ended up saying this means that they don't appreciate him. That the company doesn't appreciate him. So Roman ended up telling Paul Heyman to go and find out who doesn't appreciate him. So pretty much that was basically that. And then we had the Street Profits uh, come out. You know, Montez Ford and Angel Dawkins, they were having a uh, Street Profits New Year's Day smoketacular. So they came out and then SmackDown went to commercial. Then when SmackDown came back from the commercial, we had a surprise return. Sonya Deville returned. She was shown walking backstage. It was the first time that we've seen uh, Sonya Deville since her match with Mandy Rose at SummerSlam, where Mandy Rose ended up defeating her in a Loser Leaves WWE match. And we all know why uh, Sonya Deville lost that match because, of course, they had uh, she had that stupid fucker who was stalking her online and he was executing a kidnapping attempt. He was going to kidnap Sonya Deville and this guy was uh, messaging her on uh, Instagram, sending her private messages on Instagram, had, from what I heard, a Twitter that he had all pictures of Sonya on it. And this guy was planning to kidnap Sonya. He found out wh where Sonya lived, went to her apartment, and pretty much uh, this uh, had a case. So well, we all know uh, about Sonya Deville and uh, this case that you know was going on. I wasn't expecting Sonya to uh, be back for a while until uh, this case uh, got settled with that uh, stupid fucker. So, but you know, glad to see Sonya back. Hopefully, WWE ends up giving her a big push. I could see her participating in the Women's Royal Rumble. I could see her winning uh, the Royal Rumble. Uh, I have three uh, three women superstars who I could see win the Royal Rumble. One is Bailey. Two is Bianca Belair. And three, Sonya Deville, now that we've seen her return uh, tonight on SmackDown. Bailey versus Sasha, once again, I, I don't want to see it. Bianca versus Sasha, that could be a really good match there if WWE builds it rightly that'll be a, a match a dream match to see or Sonya Deville versus Sasha that would be uh that would be a good match there also seeing that at WrestleMania so yeah so that those are uh the three uh women who I want to see win the Royal Rumble if I were to choose who to win the Royal Rumble the Women's Royal Rumble, and face Sasha for the title at WrestleMania, it would have to be Sonya Deville. You know, even though I want to see Bianca win it and ha see her have a match with Sasha, you know, I think, I think WWE is going to be pushing Sonya Deville to win the Women's Royal Rumble. So, yeah, so glad to see uh, Sonya back. And then we had 
Of course, the uh, Street Profits New Year's Day Smoktacular. They end up dancing around. They say goodbye to 2020. They say the year wasn't all bad because they won the SmackDown Tag Team uh, Championships. And they were the Raw Tag Team Champions, of course. So they said that they have a big reveal to do. So there was a cover-in around uh, something. They end up removing it. They removed the, uh, the cover-in and they reveal a set of drums. Dawkins was playing the drums. Montez Ford was making some uh, predictions for 2021 for the new year. So he ended up saying that, that he predicts their, the, their Intercontinental title t-shirt that they were going to give Sami Zayn is, will be a top seller on WWE Shop. So Ford ended up having some more predict, more predictions. Of course, we saw a replay of uh, them taunting Sami Zayn uh, with the t-shirt. So Ford had more predictions. And this one was of him making fun of Dolph Ziggler. So he was making fun of Dolph Ziggler. We had Dawkins and uh, Montez Ford end up getting attacked by Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. Dawkins ended up on the floor. Roode then went out and grabbed the chair, ended up smacking uh, Dawkins over the back with it. Rude then tossed Dawkins over the barricade. Rude and Dolph then team then double teamed on Montez Ford. And they end up wrapping uh, Montez Ford's leg around the ring post. Rude held uh, Montez Ford's leg against the uh, ring post. Dolph then smacked uh Dolph then smacked uh, Montez Ford's leg uh, with the chair, putting it into the, uh, the ring steps. So Dolph and Rude were taunting uh, Montez Ford at ringside. Rude delivered another chair shot. Dawkins was shown crawling uh, back over the barricade to check on uh, Montez Ford. Rude and Ziggler end up mocking the Street Profits and they wish them a happy new year. Dawkins then end up tending to Montez Ford as Dolph and Rude end up uh, backing off. And that was that. Overall, this segment was terrible. It was god-awful. And then we saw Dolph and Rude uh, backstage. Kayla Braxton then ended up catching up uh, with the both of them. She ended up asking both Ziggler and Rude the reason for the attack on the Street Profits. Ziggler ended up saying that this was not unprovoked, as the Street Profits have been provoking them for months. Rude then ended up saying that it's all about fun and games, but he wonders if the Profits are having fun now. He ended up saying about how the Prophets have something they want and deserve. So Dolph ended up demanding a rematch for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. He ended up saying that they won't stop the attacks until they get what they want. And that, of course, is the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. So that was that. Then we had Otis and Daniel Bryan versus Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura. The match itself was meh, in my opinion. It was just a very meh match. So we had Daniel Bryan and Otis come out along with uh, Chad Gable. So we had Cesaro and Nakamura mocking the idea of Daniel Bryan winning the Royal Rumble. So the match started off with Cesaro uh, and Daniel Bryan. 
Cesaro ended up taking Daniel Bryan down with a headlock. Cesaro then dropped Daniel Bryan with the shoulder, went for the pin. Daniel Bryan ended up kicking out. Daniel Bryan ended up dropping Cesaro, which Cesaro got back up, took uh, Daniel Bryan to the corner, tagged in Nakamura. Daniel Bryan ended up getting dropped uh, by Nakamura. And we saw Otis end up going for the Caterpillar on Cesaro. And he ended up yelling out, 2021. And then Otis then dropped the elbow on Cesaro. Went for the cover. Nakamura ended up breaking it up. Otis then uh, went to the second rope. Tried to deliver the Vader bomb. Cesaro ended up moving out of the way. Nakamura ended up getting tagged in. Otis uh, blocked the Kinshasa. And he lift Nakamura in the air. And at the end of the match, Daniel Bryan ended up locking in the yes lock on Nakamura. Nakamura ended up tapping out. So there you go. Daniel Bryan and Otis ended up winning the match. Overall, just a very meh match. So then... We had Paul Heyman end up approaching Roman Reigns and Jey Uso. And he ends up blaming the match uh, with Kevin Owens on Adam Pearce. Reigns end up saying they, that they just won't learn. And everyone is trying to take what they have worked for. Roman ended up telling Jey to not to let them and go out there and show them why he's the main event. So that was that. Main event. Kevin Owens versus Jey Uso. This was a pretty uh, okay match here. We had the match start off with uh, Jey Uso and Kevin Owens staring each other down. And they were brawling. Kevin Owens ended up getting the upper hand on uh, Jey. Started stomping away on him. They both end up on the floor. Owens nailed a clothesline to uh, Jay and then delivered a run and sent on. Owens ended up bringing Jay back into the ring. Hits another sent on. Goes for the cover. Jay ended up kicking out a two. So Owens was stomping uh, away more at Jay. Jay was trying to uh, take Kevin Owens out, but Kevin Owens was... Uh, staying on top of Jay, taking out the injured leg of Jay. And there was a point where uh, SmackDown came back from the commercial. Jay Uso ended up sending Kevin Owens down. Kevin Owens then delivered a stunner on Jay. And then he went for the cover. And there you go. Kevin Owens ended up winning. So that was pretty funny how SmackDown came back from the commercial. We see uh, Jey Uso and Kevin Owens train strikes. Jay then sent Kevin Owens to the mat. But Kevin Owens got up and then hit the stunner and then the match was over. When the match was over, it was like 9.51 around there. 9.50. So post-match, we had Kevin Owens... Uh, calling uh, Roman out. And he started beating uh, Jay up more. He ended up dropping Jay with another stunner. Owens ended up uh, looking at the stage. He was just trying to let Roman come out. Owens then got out of the ring. He grabbed Corey Gray's headset. And he was telling Roman to come take care of of his family. He called Roman a bitch. So Owens ended up grabbing uh, a pair of handcuffs from underneath the ring. He brought him in and he cuffed Jay to the top rope. Of course, this is getting Kevin Owens is getting revenge after what Jay did to him last week in the cage match where uh, Jay ended up handcuffing Kevin Owens. So, 
Jay ends up throwing a fit because uh, Kevin Owens ends up handcuffing him to the uh, the top rope. And Jay was trying to break free of the handcuffs, but Kevin Owens ended up delivering a super kick uh, to him. Kevin Owens uh, kept stopping away on Jay. He was focusing on Jay's uh, leg, which was uh, hurt. So Charles Robinson, who was the referee, he was trying to get Kevin Owens uh, to stop. But Owens uh, said that he only wanted Roman. So Kevin Owens then ended up cuffing both Jay's arms. He brings him out of the ring and brought him over to uh, the stage, the production area that was set up next to the stage. Kevin Owens ended up beating Jay Uso up you know, near the production area, delivers another super kick to him. So Kevin Owens uh, is on top of the platform where the LED uh, board is, where the, you know you see the crowd there. So Kevin Owens was about to uh, jump off of the platform to put Jay through the table while Jay was still uh, handcuffed. Roman was shown on the platform. So Reigns ended up beating Kevin Owens down on the platform. Kevin Owens fought back. Reigns ended up uh, keeping control. So Jay Uso uh, was also there. So Jay and Roman started uh, beating up on Kevin Owens. So they end up sending Owens up another part of the platform, you know, behind the uh, the LED board with the fans. So we had uh, Roman and Jay unload chair shots uh, to Kevin Owens. They both had chairs in hand, and Jay Uso ended up holding uh, Kevin Owens as Roman was delivering more chair shots to him. Owens uh, was shown trying to fight back. Jay Uso uh, delivered a super kick to Kevin Owens. Reigns uh, was shown sending Kevin Owens into the uh, LED board. He slammed his head into the LED board a few times. So Reigns was just pounding on Kevin Owens with... Uh, right hands. Reigns grabbed Kevin Owens from uh, high on top of the platform and he ended up launching Kevin Owens off the platform and Kevin Owens went through the table. Uh, he went through the table that unfortunately he was originally going to uh, deliver a splash to Jey Uso through. So Kevin Owens ended up going through the table. So Reigns end up standing tall on the platform and Jey Uso end up looking down at Kevin Owens. Referee end up coming out to check on Owens. So that was how SmackDown went off the air tonight. The first SmackDown of the new year went off the air. But really thought uh, this was good. This was a good ending to SmackDown. You know, the beginning and the end, like I said, with Kevin Owens, Jey Uso, and Roman Reigns were the only good uh, parts of SmackDown tonight. You know, Kevin Owens and Jey Uso, like I said, the match was okay. Uh, what else? Uh, Big E and Apollo Crews, they're meeting, of course, next week for the Intercontinental Championship. So, I mean, the women's match between uh, Sasha, Bianca versus Bailey and Carmella. You know, it was uh, okay. So, but doesn't make for a good show. So, but overall, SmackDown was terrible tonight. But anyways, that's it for the SmackDown review. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Definitely uh, give the video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, 
And until next video, I'll see you all later.